Finally, the Silvered Hawk has made its landing. What's going on Guardians, my name is The Black Link and shortly after reset yesterday, the official quest for the exotic, classic, legendary D1 hand cannon, the Hawkmoon, went live. And of course it happened shortly after I went to work so I didn't get a chance to come back and play with it until well into the evening. But stayed up all night, got the quest done, got my hands on the Hawk Moon, and that is going to be what we are talking about in today's video. We're going to be talking about how you can get your hands on this weapon and how exactly its exotic ability performs, plus the future of this exotic weapon, because there is some really interesting stuff surrounding it. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Once you've logged into the game, you can start this quest by heading to the Tangled Shore and speaking with the Spider. He'll get you started. He's been noticing the presence of a spooky, ethereal, light-infused bird all around, and your first step is going to be to collect five feathers from that bird. The first of these feathers will be located right outside of the spider's lair. So if you head back outside and go to that barrier that usually is supposed to keep sparrows from getting into the spider's lair, there's a box on the right-hand side right in front of the door. You jump on top of that, you'll get your first feather. Once you've grabbed it, make your way to the sludge in the EDZ. Once you've loaded in, follow the short path that I'm taking here to jump onto this metal structure. This is where you'll find the second feather waiting for you. Scan it and you're ready to move on to the third. After this, you'll need to head down to the Cosmodrome, where the third feather can be found waiting for you basically right in front of the fast travel node in the steps. Once you've warped in, jump right up on top of this structure and you'll find the third feather waiting and ready to be scanned. Do it and you're ready to move on to the fourth. This one is going to be in the Dreaming City. Thankfully, it's at the first checkpoint as well. You just head right to the Devalian Mist and then make your way over into the area like you're heading into the Blind Well. If you're a newer Beyond Light player and haven't really had much time to explore the Dreaming City, just follow the path that we're taking here. It's very easy to get to. And once you get to the big gate, the next feather will be over on the left side of the door. Make your way to it, scan it, and we can move on to the final feather. This one is going to be located in the Shrine of Oryx, basically the same place you had to go in the initial Season of the Hunt quest where you met up with the Crow and saved Osiris. So, go ahead and load up into the moon, head through the Archer's Line, and follow the path that we're showing you here to take you all the way into the Shrine of Oryx. It does take a fair bit of time to get to the end of this path. But once you've made your way into the room where we used to fight Malak way back in Destiny 1, you'll find the final feather over on the left hand side of the room. Once you're there, go ahead and scan it and the quest will update tasking you with returning to the crow. You're going to be getting a lot of that by the way. Anyways, next he's going to send you on a mission in the EDZ titled Cry From Beyond. This is the mission that takes place in the hollowed grave and a brand new sector with a pretty lengthy jumping puzzle. Go ahead and go through the mission, make your way to the shard of the traveler at the inn, defeat the two taken centurions and you will collect an effigy of Hawk Moon. After you're done with this, return to the crow. Then he'll task you with collecting 50 orbs of power to help revive the gun. This is thankfully really, really easy and you can do it really any way you want to. You can go farm supers to create orbs of power. You can whip out a masterwork weapon. Literally any of those will work. Uh, a couple of great ways to get this done really quickly. Head into the blind well where you can get supers constantly thanks to the light buffs in there. Or you can head to Altars of Sorrow. That's actually what I did. I just loaded up the moon, went to the Altars of Sorrow, and it took me about four minutes with all the ads that were spawning there and a masterwork tuckleberry to get the 50 orbs of power required. However you get this done, it won't really take you that long, and then the quest will update again, asking you to return to the Crow. Once you've done that, he's going to send you to some new coordinates in the EDZ. These coordinates will take you into a new mission with the Reservoir in the EDZ, taking you to an entirely new area that takes you kind of along the way of the Lake of Shadows. In this mission, you'll get a ton of lore with the Crow himself, and you'll be tasked with finding five more Paracausal Feathers. 
Don't worry, they'll show up pretty readily on your map, so you'll, you'll be able to see on the HUD exactly where these feathers are going to be hiding. Once you've gotten all the feathers and made your way to the inn, the shiny bird made of light that we've been following all this quest long will be up near the top. So use the platforms around the final room to make your way up to it, scan with him, and then this quest will update, asking you to return to the crow once again. Do so, and then he's going to task you with what might take you the longest in this quest. The next step is titled Hunting Party, where you're going to need to defeat 34 champions or 200 guardians in the Crucible or in Gambit. Now, much like the Orbs of Power step, you can get this done however you want. Either way, it's going to take you a little bit of time. 200 kills in the Crucible is pretty easy with Mayhem Live, at least at the time of this recording on December 8th, 2020. But of course, if you're watching this video in future weeks and months and years, it might not be live at that time, so you might have to go play other Crucible modes like Iron Banner or Clash or Control or something like that. Of course, the champion grind can be pretty easy depending on where you go. One great way to get this done is to go and find whatever is the 1250 or 1280 lost sector of the day. Again, at the time of this recording, it was the Concealed Void on Europa. This will provide you with several champions that you can defeat each time you run through it. About eight or nine runs of this lost sector will have this step done in no time, although you might want to run it with, uh, with some friends just to make it a little bit faster. It can be done solo, but of course with friends, it's going to be a little bit quicker. Another good way to do this is running the Nightfall at 1250. 1250 Nightfalls usually throw a huge amount of champions at you. And again, this week, at the time of this recording, the Nightfall this week is the Inverted Spire on Nessus. And there's actually a pretty great farm that you can do by just going through the initial zone into the first instanced area where you find the Cabal fighting the Vex. Four champions spawn in this area. You can go in, kill one or two or three of them, and then jump off the cliff. It'll reset that entire area, spawn you right back, and you can just keep farming them over and over again. This is what I did, and I was able to get the 34 champion kills done in really about 30, 40 minutes. Just load up the 1250 Nightfall, find where those champions are spawning, take them out, but leave the rest of the enemy so you don't advance the checkpoint, and once you've killed enough of the champions, just jump off the cliff, it'll reset the entire area. Make sure you do this on 1250 again so you're not ruining anybody else's Nightfall experience, or go in with a full fire team. I'd actually probably recommend that uh, for this as well. Doing it solo wasn't impossible, but that barrier colossus was definitely annoying. But, again, this is a great way to farm out those champion kills without taking too much time. Anyways, once you finish this, the quest will update and you'll be tasked with heading back into that same mission zone we did to get the effigy of Hawkmoon. So head back into the EDZ, load that mission up, take an alternate path through that Lost Sector jumping puzzle, and then defeat the enemies at the end to claim the Hawkmoon as your own. This quest will work very much like the other exotic quests this season, uh, where you'll get the weapon at the end of the mission, they'll give you a little bit of time to equip it, and then you'll be fighting enemies with it. And it is a lot of of fun. But there we go, Guardians. Congratulations. Once you're finished with all of that, you will have claimed the exotic hand cannon Hawkmoon, a classic, a legendary weapon from Destiny 1. Let's go ahead and take a look at this bad boy. So Hawkmoon comes in at 140 rounds per minute with an 8 round magazine. It's going to be relevant a little bit later on in this kind of mini review of it. Its exotic ability is titled Paracausal Shot. Final blows and precision hits with Hawkmoon grant stacks of Paracausal Charge. The final round in the magazine deals bonus damage based on the number of stacks. Stowing Hawkmoon on the final round will remove this bonus. So essentially, you either get kills with Hawkmoon or you land precision shots and it stacks a buff called Paracausal Charge. This buff can max out at time 7, basically so if you hit 7 out of 8 of the shots as either kills or precision hits, that's the max benefit you can get, allowing you to deal massive amounts of bonus damage on the final shot. And the boost there is significant, it is multiplicative, it is exponentially larger damage in PvE, and it is more than enough to one-shot Guardians. I think basically every Guardian and every Super except Titan Behemoth, if you one-shot headshot them in PvP. The buff itself is 
very powerful, but there are some caveats there. So you can build up Paracausal Charge by getting precision shots, and you actually can swap the weapon away so long as you are not on that last bullet in the magazine. And in the limited amount of testing I've been able to do, there really is no way to circumvent uh, that whole losing the Paracausal Charge on the last round if you swap weapons. I played around a bit with transversive steps and that does not allow you to bypass losing that Paracausal Shot. It causes you to lose it because the game reads it as a reload. Same thing with Inertia Override. You can't really bypass that to build up more than seven charge shots. At least not right now. That might change with the Catalyst coming in for this gun. So basically, you have to land seven precision shots or get seven kills in order to get that maximum charge. Then you're dealing massive extra damage on the final bullet. Generally speaking, it's a pretty good and snappy feeling hand cannon. You can definitely tell there's a decent amount of aim assist on it, and its stats are pretty good when compared to the rest of the 140s out there. In PvP, it's a solid performer just as a hand cannon as well. Of course, being a 140, deals about 70 per crit and 47 per body with no stacks of paracausal charge. And of course, that damage on your final round will increase based on the stacks that you've got. At one stack of Paracausal Charge, the final bullet does about 91 damage in PvP. At two stacks, it's 93. At three stacks, it's 102. At four stacks, it's 127. At five stacks, it's 178. At six stacks, you can start one-shotting everybody at 272 damage. And if you somehow manage to get seven stacks of Paracausal Charge in PvP, you are dealing 426 damage per precision shot. It is ludicrous how much damage that final bullet gets. And as big as these jumps in PvP are, it is much, much larger in uh, PvE. The first bullet, if you get times one, it actually gives you the largest jump of this gun's damage, taking it up by about 292% of the gun's base damage. At times two, it's an additional 2%. At times three, it's an additional 10%. At times four, it's an additional 24%. At times five, it's an additional 41% damage. At times six, it's an additional 53% damage. At times seven, it is an additional 57% overall damage. You can see here, going from dealing almost 4,000 damage per crit shot to over 70,000 with Paracausal times 7. This proves that Hawkmoon is nothing to sneeze at when it comes to PvE. This gun is going to be just as effective in PvE as it can be in PvP. And that is really interesting to see on one of these legacy D1 Crucible-centered exotic hand cannons. But before we get too far away from things, let's look at the rest of the perks on this because there's a really interesting caveat that Hawkmoon has here. It's got corkscrew rifling for that increased range and stability and handling speed, alloy magazine with faster reloads for when the magazine is empty, and considering the entire point of this weapon is to get to that final round and then get that bonus damage, this is a perfect perk. You mix it with some hand cannon reloaders and Hawkmoon reloads really, really quickly. But it's the exotic trait after that that's got everybody talking. Transformative. Future drops of this weapon will have random rolls. This is really, really, really exciting, and it's what's making Hawkmoon uh, a really interesting prospect for the future. Now, we don't know how these future drops are going to be working. It might be a part of the enhanced difficulty Wrathborn hunts that we know are supposed to be coming later on this season, but the fact that this thing is capable of having randomized rolls, at least with a random perk in this slot, is really interesting. And the perks it can get here are pretty darn good. You can get stuff like Killing Wind or Surplus, both of which would be tier 1 perks to have here on the Hawkmoon. And it starts a new era, kind of, of, of having exotics that can get legendary random rolls on them. And I wonder if this is going to be the only weapon that does this, or if sometime in the future Bungie is going to be doing this with more weapons. Either way, I am very excited to see what's going to happen here. The prospect of getting something like a Hammer Forge Surplus Smooth Grip Hawkmoon sometime in the future as a random drop has got me salivating. This thing is already statistically one of the best hand cannons in the game, and it feels snappy. Whether you are playing with controller or mouse and keyboard, this feels like one of the best performing hand cannons in the game, and I cannot wait to get my hands on some other versions of it in the future. 
Overall, Hawk Moon is pretty darn good. Just as a normal hand cannon, it's one of the best performing options you can have out there for PvE or for PvP. With its exotic ability, it's very interesting, it is very powerful, but there are some issues with it. I kind of wish getting a kill with Hawk Moon would give you two stacks of Paracausal Shot rather than one, and you blow through that eight rounds really quickly. I understand why it's only eight rounds, so you can get to the final damage shot uh, in an efficient way but you still run out of ammo really quickly in this. Thankfully, it's got a really fast reload. And the last kind of complaint there, of course, is you've got one shot. <laughs> Whether you've been getting your precision hits or your kills or not, you've got one shot with final round to deal that bonus damage. And if you whiff it, uh, it kind of hurts. Hopefully with the catalyst for this weapon, maybe it can give it a little bit more ammo or maybe it can do a uh, kind of a double whammy. I could see a catalyst for Hawkmoon giving it more ammo, maybe bringing its magazine up to 13 or something like it used to be in Destiny 1, and also making it so that precision hits and kills give you more stacks of Paracausal Shot. Maybe again, like I said before, two stacks of it. That would make this thing instantly an unbelievably good exotic, and it's already pretty good in its current form. But alright Guardians, that is how you can get your hands on the Hawkmoon Exotic Hand Cannon, plus my initial thoughts on it. I'm going to be playing around a lot more with this Hand Cannon over the next couple of days, but I definitely dig what I've had thus far. But that's it, and those are my thoughts. Be sure to leave me yours down in the comment section below. Have you gotten your hands on the Hawkmoon? How do you feel about this returning legend? Be sure to let me know. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, make sure you subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. But remember now, thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I am the Black Link. You guardians, stay frosty.